Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about black holes and we're going to be talking about what happens when black holes evaporate. What actually happens at those last few milliseconds and nanoseconds of their life before they basically disappear. We're going to talk about the death of a black hole. Welcome to What The Math. So before I start, I actually wanted to give you a bit of a visual theory of what really happens to uh, black holes according to late Stephen Hawking and how he was able to redefine our understanding of the longevity of these unusual monsters. So first of all, you actually have to understand that even in complete vacuum of space where there's technically nothing, there are these virtual particles that are being constantly generated from well, essentially nothing. This is something that uh, quantum physics predicts and this is something we truly believe today because it explains a lot of things in the world. Uh, the idea of these virtual particles becomes even more interesting, um, and this is actually what Stephen Hawking was kind of famous for defining, uh, when it comes to black holes. So let's just say these uh, virtual particles are actually created right now, but very, very close to the actual uh, event horizon of a black hole. So as these two particles are generated, one of them might actually accidentally cross into the black hole, while the other is left with nothing to attach to now and technically now becomes a real particle and leaves the actual event horizon of a black hole because it has enough energy to escape. So when this occurs, um, over the period of billions and trillions of years, the black hole will actually start losing mass. This is essentially what we call the black hole evaporation. And this particular type of energy is currently known as the Hawking radiation. Now, interestingly, the bigger the black hole, the less it evaporates. The more massive uh, the black hole, the less it evaporates as well. But small black holes, or I guess micro black holes evaporate much faster and they actually exhibit the effect to such an extent that um, hypothetically you could use these black holes for um, unlimited energy. This is another topic for another video but for now all you need to know is that this is actually um, hypothetically the cleanest energy source we could potentially create. However, um, if I were to take a look at any of the black holes we discovered already that we know exist out there, like for example this Cygnus X3, um, you would actually be surprised to realize that these black holes don't actually evaporate at all. They don't exhibit this property just yet. And the um, answer to this is, well, it's kind of simple, but at the same time kind of difficult to explain mathematically. So I'm going to give you a very simple um, solution that hopefully will be clear. They don't evaporate because they are actually colder on the inside than the uh, background space around them. Due to the background radiation, um, the actual temperature of space is approximately 2.3 Kelvin. The black hole on the inside is much colder. It's very, very close to absolute zero, at least this one is. And until the temperature around them actually gets below this temperature on the inside of the black hole, no evaporation will occur. They'll actually stay relatively stable um, and so they'll survive for a very long time. But theoretically, you could actually have uh, micro black holes that are already warmer than the outside space and thus would exhibit this evaporation. In other words, um, it's very likely that there are currently black holes out there that we can't really detect because they're just too tiny and uh, are basically black holes uh, that are releasing energy and are generating energy because of the Hawking radiation. In other words, um, if you actually try to calculate and find out the mass of this black hole needed for this evaporation to occur, you would discover that it would be about half the mass of our moon. If I were to take our own moon and I guess divide it in two, so uh, make it about half of the mass right now, I'm gonna do this very very roughly, um, and then if I were to take this and turn it into a black hole, which we can do by essentially condensing all of this mass into a tiny 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 point, I don't exactly know how big it has to be, but let's say one centimeter. Or surprisingly even less so, it's about one twentieth of a millimeter. And it's so tiny that you can't even see it here. It's, this is how small this black hole is. At this point, it would have enough mass to start evaporating quite a lot. 
And this particular black hole, even though it's kind of invisible here right now, um, would be uh, emitting energy that we could actually detect um, using, well, various sensors, not really our eyes, because it's really, really small. It's basically not even the size of your uh, fingernail. It's essentially kind of like the thickness of the human hair. And I actually will dedicate a video to this specifically, but for now, let's actually go even further. Let's decrease this black hole in size to maybe the last few seconds of the life of a black hole. What is really fascinating about black holes is that as they decrease in size and as they essentially evaporate, they exhibit this unusual property of becoming not black anymore, but actually brighter and brighter and brighter. Unfortunately, there is no way for us to simulate this very easily, but in essence, as the black hole decreases in mass and in size, it starts emitting more and more energy. And at some point, it actually becomes visible to us, and at some point, it becomes ridiculously bright. The thing is, at that point, it's also so tiny that it's even smaller than the smallest uh, subatomic particle. In other words, it is ridiculously, ridiculously small. If this tiny micro black hole um, went into you and went inside your body, you would most likely not even notice it. It's that tiny. And uh, it would actually pass very likely between your atoms and not even influence them that much. Maybe a few of them, but not a lot of them. And a few seconds before its demise, uh, a typical micro black hole will actually resemble a tiny microscopic star. Okay, microscopic is not even the right word for this. It's like ultra microscopic. It's so tiny that it's very difficult to imagine. If I were to use the super famous Scale of the Universe website and try to kind of compare this to um, a size that I'm talking about, I would have to actually go way, way, way past the atoms and even past the subatomic particles such as quarks. So right around here, this is maybe where we would start discovering the size of those black holes, those micro black holes that are so bright that they're star-like. And within only a few seconds, we'll actually keep decreasing in size and increasing in luminosity and in temperature. And this is where it gets really cool because black holes actually are the only objects in the universe can, that can potentially reach infinite temperature. Temperature is so high that they basically completely disappear. And they do this when they essentially reach the absolute uh, minimum length known as the Planck length. And when the temperature goes to the infinity, their mass goes to zero and they kind of sort of just push, disappear. But what I really wanted to do is I wanted to find out. So, you know, in the last second or so, how much mass is left and how much of this mass is then converted to pure energy. And I actually found um, the math for this, and I'm going to kind of try to demonstrate this by using more common objects, so you, you kind of get the idea. Basically, in the last second or so, the black hole is a lot brighter than this particular object that I created. And um, in this one second, it uses up approximately 200,000 kilograms of mass, of matter, which is overall equivalent to about 20 of these beautiful third stage uh, parts from Saturn V rocket. This is approximately 200,000 kilograms altogether. All of this is essentially eliminated in about one second and turns into perfect energy. In other words, um, imagine this tiny, tiny micro explosion, this tiny nuclear energy that is produced um, by these micro black holes as they're eliminated, um, as all of this mass that I'm trying to create here turns into energy. Now, um, it's very difficult for us to really imagine what happens on the inside of these micro black holes and how this energy manifests itself. But you can probably imagine that it's a very, very, very large explosion. However, not as large as a typical, uh, like let's just say star generating energy, because if I were to look at a typical star, like for example, our sun, um, our sun actually uh, goes through about uh, 4.3 million uh, tons of various materials in a single second. So there's a lot more energy used up there. But these micro black holes use up about 200 tons of mass in a tiny, 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 tiny spot. So that's kind of the biggest difference here. In more human terms, uh, the biggest ever nuclear explosion, this right here, the Russian Tsar Bomba, um, was approximately 2.3 kilograms of mass converted to energy and resulted in uh, basically a 50 megaton explosion. Now, this tiny black hole that we're talking about, 
is going to be turning 200 tons or 200,000 uh, kilograms into pure energy. Roughly 100,000 times more explosive than this right here, which is, considering the fact that it's a tiny point, is actually kind of mind-blowing. So what really happens in those tiny micro black holes and how they actually detonate and how this energy is then distributed across the universe is obviously a mystery because we don't really know if we've actually been able to detect these uh, particular events yet. And the main reason why we haven't really been able to detect any of this yet is because, well, for one, um, these black holes are practically invisible. Micro black holes are essentially impossible to detect right now. We don't have the technology or the means to see them. Right now we can sort of predict the existence of uh, solar mass black holes and also supermassive black holes by their interaction with nearby matter. But even those black holes we haven't really seen just yet. The picture, the official picture for the first black hole hasn't really come out yet. And so the only theory we have for the existence of these micro black holes is really just from the math itself. It sort of makes sense that they would exist. It also sort of makes sense that when they become smaller and smaller, they start releasing more energy. And in those last few seconds, they release a tremendous amount of energy in a tiny, tiny space. Now, interestingly, there's actually some problems that are generated from this particular theory, specifically the so-called information paradox, when we think that information cannot be just lost uh, by an exploding or evaporating black hole, but there are solutions to that a particular theory as well. And also, on the other hand, um, the actual Hawking radiation has not been detected yet either, so we don't really know if it is real and if black holes really do evaporate. And so the experimental detection of all of this, specifically exploding micro black holes and of course the Hawking radiation, will most likely be one of the biggest discoveries of this century. Hopefully we'll get there and hopefully we'll still be alive to see it. Until then though, uh, all you have to kind of know about these micro black holes is that if we can actually generate them here on Earth, we could potentially create this incredible, incredible uh, source of clean, free energy. Okay, not really free, but very, very safe. And uh, unlike the media that speculated that a micro black hole could destroy Earth, like I mentioned in the video, they're so tiny that they could pass through anything and not even be noticed. Which is actually maybe something we've detected previously when our satellites that are orbiting on planet Earth have experienced uh, some weird, unusual phenomena that could not be explained otherwise through time dilation. And this is actually something that could be technically explained if those were micro black holes. But other than that, for now, that's really all we know about them. And in some of the future videos, we're going to explore this a little bit more, but only from theoretical perspective. Until then, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space through simulations and video games. And come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.